This problem I'm about to show you, I guarantee you can relate to. I've been through it, I reckon you've been through it, and I know someone that's going through it. OK, guys, can you find your stuff? G'day, can Christine. You oh, Adam, thanks for coming. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. And uh, this is what I'm talking about, guys. So Looks like you've got your hands full. Boy, <laughs> it could be hard work. Yeah, so you're trying to leave in the mornings, this is a common occurrence? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just um, if we're more organised, we get out the door faster. Well, the good news is I've got an idea that I can think it will make it a little bit easier for you to get ready and leave in the morning. Oh, make yeah, sure that'd be fantastic, yeah. OK, what about you give me a high five? You get your stuff? And good girl. Thanks, well Marley. done. Good job, honey. She's so cute. Sometimes the biggest problems can be the easiest to fix. The idea is to make a coat rack. Christine's going to love it because it's going to get everything from the floor up onto the wall. Now, this one is going to look great because I'm using some 32 by 32 Tassie Oak, so it's going to be tazzy snazzy. And the first thing I need to do is cut 27 pieces of these at 195 mil long. Now, because I need so many pieces at the same length, I've just set up a stop block. Now, you might not have a drop saw. You can even do this with a miter box and a hand saw, but you still want to make sure that you set up a stop block. That way, you know that every piece is going to be exactly the same. With all the pieces cut, now I want to join them together. But I want them to be able to move, so I'm going to be using an 8mm threaded rod. That means I need to get a hole in exactly the same place and dead straight in every single piece. So to do that, I'm going to be using a dowling jig. Now, you can pick these up for around $20 off the shelf at the hardware store. And basically, I'm going to lock it in. I'll clamp it off. I'm going to put a mark on the face that's facing out so I know that every piece is the same way. And the best thing about this is it helps me keep the drill dead straight. So that means I'm going to have a hole that is perfect. It's in the same spot and straight. Now I just need to actually do it. I should have made a smaller coat rack. <laughs> With all the pieces cut, now I've just got half of them because I'm going to be cutting a 45 degree angle on each end because these pieces are going to be the ones that you use to either hang your coat on or your hat. Now this is where our mark comes in handy because the side that I've marked will always be the short point. And again, because I've got so many pieces, I've just set up my stop block and the tip here is to make sure that you don't take your 45 cut all the way to the edge, otherwise you're going to end up with a sharp corner. So I'm just coming in about three mil, which will give us a nice flat bit to hang your stuff on. You, you. With all the pieces cut and prepared, now I'm just giving them a good sand to get rid of any sharp edges. Then I'll be rubbing them down with some Danish oil. Let's come together. The reason I'm using Danish oil is because it soaks into the timber and we want our fingers to be able to move up and down. We're now ready to join our fingers together. Now, the reason why I chose an 8mm threaded rod, it's actually easier to pull through these fingers rather than a timber dowel. Also, our fingers are going to go up and down, so this allows us to adjust the tension by doing it up or loosening it. Party, radio on how cool is that? Our threaded rod is in place and you can see how this is going to work. But the question is, how am I going to mount it to the wall? I'm not physically going to go through and mount every square bit. That would be ridiculous. Instead, I've got this piece of plywood that I've pre-drilled and I'm going to attach that to all these square bits. The tip here is to paint it the same colour as the wall so that when we put it in place, it all just blends in. Now, I've just left the two end blocks off. That way, I can check the tension of our fingers. Once I'm happy with that, I can add these on. The only difference is I've just used a spade bit to make a bigger hole so it slides over our nut. Oh, 
how much neater is this? Not only is it stylish, but it is practical too. This is gonna make Christine's life so much easier when she's trying to get the kids out the door. Wait a minute, she's got three under five. It'll be a little bit easier for her anyway.